Welcome, pool guys and gals, to the Let's Talk About Pools podcast, where your host, Lauren Broom, will take a splash into many topics in the pool industry to educate all aquatic professionals. Listen in, and you just might be surprised what you'll learn. So let's jump right in. Welcome, everybody, today to episode 42 of the Let's Talk About Pools podcast. And I got to interview Jeff Alsop with GPS Track It. And we talked about GPS tracking and many other things to help pool pros with fleet management and saving some money at the same time. I thought it was a very interesting and fun topic and bringing in some technology and that kind of thing that can help the pool industry, not talked a lot about. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I also want to thank my podcast sponsors, Skimmer, Thank you so much. And Ray Pack. Thank you so much, Ray Pack, for also being a podcast sponsor. So continuing education education to our pool pros through the podcast. I hope you enjoy this one and let's dive right in. This is Skimmer, software for the modern pool professional. What can you do with Skimmer? See all your customers on a map, build service routes quickly, and let Skimmer optimize them for you. Access customer information, including contact details and full service history anytime and anywhere. Customize work orders to track jobs like repairs and filter cleanings. Email your customers when you complete a service. You can include service details and on-site photos. Does your customer need a part? Add it to the shopping list and track it from purchase to installation. Skimmer will even remind you what parts you need for the day and you can mark them as installed right when you're finished. Skimmer doesn't just store your service history. It helps you get paid. We integrate with QuickBooks Online for fast, easy invoicing. And we've got more billing options coming soon. All that's just the beginning. Go to GetSkimmer.com to watch our demo video, check out our online tutorials, and see if Skimmer is right for you. Welcome, everybody, today to the Let's Talk About Pools podcast. And on my episode today, my guest is Jeff Alsup. He's the Director of Strategic Accounts for GPS Track It. Welcome today, Jeff. Thank you for having me, Lauren. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So let's just get right into this. Jump, as I always say, let's jump right in since this is a pool podcast. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I like it. And tell me a little. I I mean, I introduced you, and you have you know your your title, but tell us a little bit about you and GPS Track It. Sure. So GPS Track It's been in this industry for going on 20 years now. Um, so. That's that's some pretty stellar longevity showing that we've been able to stand the test of time within this industry because within a technology industry, you constantly have to grow, innovate, enhance what you're doing. It, it really is uh, similar, probably similar to the pool industry. New things, you've got to adapt and, and grow with, with the market. You have and, to evolve, industry. right? Right. You, you have, have to, to evolve. evolve. It's so. evolution in its own way within an industry, right? That's so true. That's so true. And specifically with technology, it's just constantly grown. And, and I've been doing this for roughly 18 years now. And so the, just the growth and the changes in technology and tools and features and all that kind of stuff is, is pretty astounding over that time period. Um, and changes in cost structures and things like that, where it's become more commoditized, more commonplace is, is really interesting. Um, so technology is fun to be in and we get to work with groups like you guys in the pool organization and pool companies um, across and in other field services as well. So so being in the industry for 20 plus years, uh, GPS Track, it has close to 10,000 clients, uh, 120 to 150,000 active subscriptions, vehicles, assets on the road today. Um, so we we have a big market share in this industry and, and you know, proof positive is, is our longevity of doing this as well. So um, as for me, I mentioned I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, I've kind of seen a lot of different things. I've, I've been working directly with GPS Track It for 14 of those years. A um, uh, big portion of that as, as uh, one of their resellers. Um, and then through some mergers and acquisitions, my company was acquired and I've rotated into a role direct with the company for the past four years. So. Um, it's been an interesting ride and, and a lot of fun to kind of take part and again, kind of see that growth and evolution of GPS track as a company going from being a reseller to now directly involved with it. And um, I've held multiple roles in this business after acquisition. Um, I managed a smaller inside sales team. I moved into um, channel enterprise, managed a small team there, and then now into strategic accounts, major accounts, and then also 
um, some work as a sales engineer, solutions architect with the kind of technical experience and, and sales acumen that I that I have as well to uh, to benefit the organization. So it's been so fun. You've had, you've had your hands in different <laughs> parts of the pie, yeah, everywhere. basically. Everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so what, I mean, what made you guys like start this company? Um, I mean, you've got the the originals back in the day and, and GPS tracking, you know, primarily was used more for um, government and military and stuff like that. And then you start seeing um, it filter into the commercial space. And it really started primarily um, in the over the road trucking industry, things like that from a, a mandate and a safety standpoint and things like that with guys being on the road longer and, and trying to monitor that. And, and that, that played into logistics um, for those larger trucking organizations to track loads and things like that. And then it started to become more commonplace in, in more the field services realm um, back in the early 2000s when I started. Uh, it's been a long time and then we've just seen that that growth where now it used to be kind of a luxury right uh, from a cost standpoint everything like that it was this new technology this this luxury that people had and people were really sure about what exactly could do for them um, but we've seen that growth over the past 20 years in this industry from a commercial perspective um, and now it's it's really commonplace right it's it's interesting to talk to a uh, a poor organization or a field services company that hasn't implemented this at one time or another. Um, and really it's as their business case changes and their needs change, um, what we find is, um, you know, we might be a better fit for them in their current solution. So we, we come in and try to create a better holistic plan around their fleet management uh, and convince them to come on board with GPS track it. So. It sounds like you kind of tailor it to their situation and what they kind of need to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many universal benefits within our platform, but but as an organization, we take uh, our clients as, uh, I don't even like calling them clients, I call them partners, right? Um, we're invested in them the same way they're invested in us, um, where we are trying to understand their business, um, figure out um, what their challenges are they face, what, you know, especially for small business owners, what keeps them up at night? Like, um, a small business, the, the owner, it's, it's emotional to them, right? And so we want to give them the the tools and uh, and, and the partnership that are going to help them succeed. Um, and so that's what we're really trying to do there is, is cr create some best practices within their fleet management um, and understand their challenges so we can show them, hey, you know what, these are the tools I think will benefit you the most within our platform. Um, there's a lot there. Um, and sometimes they get fed with the fire hose a little bit at the beginning and they kind of understand what works, um, what is important to them and what pieces of the solution they can use. and you can use as much or as little of it as you want, depending on what your current business case is. That's awesome. You know, I can see definitely uh, thinking benefits and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Sure. So how how do you think your company would help the uh, pool industry and what do you guys have to offer specifically to the pool industry since that's my listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So I work with a, a large pool conglomerate and then some smaller local pool companies here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And, you know, one of the, the primary things for them is, is the idea of is wrapping their company in, in a better safety environment. Um, people in general are starting to look at safety processes and things like that more closely. Um, so that has been a big player in, in what uh, my discussions have been with poor organizations on top of um, what everybody's trying to do right now, um, lower expenses, lower overhead costs, um, increased revenues through better efficiencies and productivity. So what we want to look for within those challenges is opportunities for that return on investment or opportunities for that, for that revenue growth for the business. And if we can do both those things, I mean, we're talking about reducing overhead costs and figuring out ways to be more product productive to increase your revenues. Now there's more cash flow rolling back into the business. And with the way with inflation right now, with costs rising, with, um, you know, a big thing with one of the companies I work with was the material shortage. It's so hard to get your hands on things these days that yeah. um, with the increase in costs, some of the smaller companies can't afford to increase their costs necessarily for, for fear of losing clients. And so how do we how can we help make up that gap? Right. How can we yep. reduce your costs so you can keep your same margins without raising those costs on your clients? And so. We think in terms of creating that environment for increased revenue and reduction in costs, they can keep their prices the same if we're returning money back into their business. So what does that offer them? Well, it offers them 
the ability for growth in harder times, or what a lot of companies see in times like this is I can do more with less if I have the right tools. Because you're going to be able to track where vehicles are going, shrink down maybe, you know, the areas that they're traveling because you actually know time and geospatially where they're at and that kind of thing. So gas uh -huh. prices being as they are, even though they came down, they're still higher than we're used to. Yeah. So, so let's, let's take that example. So fuel prices, that's heavy on everybody's mind right now, right? So you hit the nail on the head. If we think in terms of how do we create efficiencies? Well, let's take a look at our route planning. Let's take a look at um, our, our, our dispatch mechanisms we have within the company, right? Let's think about um, how long are our trips between jobs? If we're able to truncate the time between jobs, if we're able to aggregate jobs in a smaller geographical area per technician, we can get more done in a day. What's that mean to the business? That means more jobs equals more revenue, right? And if we're okay. driving less, we're using less fuel. So there's other tools. Fuel is such an interesting thing because there's so many opportunities within the platform to create savings there. Um, first and foremost is excessive idling. Um, typically what we see is for our clients is up to a 30% reduction in what their idle time used to be. Um, every hour of idle time is a approximately a gallon of gas used. So if we think in terms of with my sales brain and math, um, let's call it $4, right? Okay, so for idling for an on average an hour a day, that's 20 bucks a week, that's 80 bucks a month in wasted fuel, multiply that by 12 months, multiply that by a 10 unit fleet, and you can start seeing the waste that can occur. Now, let's give you 30% of that back. Yeah, and I can see. I can see that. Yeah. yeah, effectively with one metric, we can essentially pay for the system. So this isn't a line item cost to your business. This is an investment in your business to create return on investment. Um, Go and golly, I don't want to know what I'm doing every <laughs> single day idling at car loops to pick up my kids. Oh my gosh! Right, I'm you're sitting there for thirty minutes. I, it's, in well, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in Florida, so it's like nineties. Right five degrees Fahrenheit outside. So I'm going to idle to keep my air conditioning on, but I'm sitting in this line to pick sure. up kids at one school and then go to the other. Sure. <laughs> well, I've, run, I've run to that in car line where I'm sitting in the car line and all of a sudden uh, my low, low fuel light goes on. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going to have to turn off my vehicle? And it's, you know, 105 in Texas, right? Uh, so I so, can understand uh, the idling part, saving money right there. I I, I yeah. don't think I can get out of that one. Maybe in the yeah. winter I can because I can turn the sure. car off for a period of time. <laughs> Just yeah. wanted to bring something personable in here. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many <laughs> downstream effects to fuel savings too. Speeding plays a role in that. Um, what we consider a safety event, things like rapid rapid acceleration, that uses more fuel um, when. We aren't maintaining our vehicles properly and keeping oil changes done, tire rotations done, services done, then our vehicles aren't running at the optimal level. And we have all those tools within the platform to figure out a better way for fuel efficiency and be able to monitor that and manage that more effectively as well. So, you know, well, that's a huge one. I agree with you what you said earlier about the whole safety piece. You know, I'm an authorized OSHA 10, OSHA 30 trainer in general industry. So I think about safety all the time. And I, I cover in outdoor worker safety, the whole vehicle and checking the vehicle. You guys are going beyond that with the technology that my understanding, they can track like bad habits, like being on their Absolutely. cell phone while they're driving or just not falling asleep. I think you, it can even tell, you know, when it records and it alerts, uh, if they're falling asleep, drowsy stuff like that, which I go over that too. What, or they shouldn't be driving if they're drowsy or under the influence of anything or anything like that that's going to cause that. So with you with that and and for the, my listeners thinking, well, does that really affect me in the pool industry? I know I'd, I'm going to keep it general, but there's this example here in Florida where we did have a pool technician that at 11 a.m. in the morning was like a DUI well above the legal limit um, for your alcohol blood content. And um, they killed somebody. So they're in jail for vehicular manslaughter, I believe. And it was an, a jogger go, uh, jogging over a bridge. And, and they found the body, I believe, in the water. So and it had all to do with, you know, driving and and these bad habits that can be caught by one of your products that 
can be used with GPS track it is my understanding. So, and that's a big deal because now you see a big cost increase to that pool service company because that happened in one of their vehicles that right. that technician's driving. So now you think uh, insurance, lawsuit, all these things that happen, workers comp, whatever, everything skyrockets for them. And if they had had maybe something like what you guys have to offer, they would have seen because there have been previous complaints about that particular pool service technician. And maybe if it was like caught on that type of technology, the the owner would have been aware of it and would have taken action before somebody actually died, you know, and, and that's just giving mm -hmm. a real world example that happened in the pool industry that, you know, something like what you guys have to offer could help maybe prevent something like that from happening. Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about that preventive measure all the times when we talk about our, our vid fleet solution, which is our dash cam solution. And Lauren, it's even more than that. It's now their reputation in the community, right? Mm -hmm. So that's damaging as well. Um, on top of some simple stats on commercial accidents, typically they can cost up to a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, a fatality accident can cost up to $3 million for an organization. When we're talking about um, you know, smaller organizations, a $3 million lawsuit puts them out of business, right? So yep. I mentioned earlier, what keeps a business owner up at night? Those things, you know, it, 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 their business is emotional. And most likely this is something that they, they started decades ago and they've built and grown and this is their baby, right? So what can GPS track it do to, to curb that type of things? And you hit the nail on the head once you mentioned prevention. That's a big aspect of how uh, we like to speak to our prospective partners about safety. Um, with our dash cam solutions, prevention is the name of the game. So we start there and then we get into the protection side of things, right? When there is an incident, um, we have proof positive. So what does that do for us? Either it's going to exonerate us or it's going to show us at fault, but we can improve our claims process, increase efficiencies, you know, reduce costs of man hours trying to deal with that um, with the video. But starting at the prevention level is so huge. I've had a camera in my vehicle for almost a year. Um, I can proof positive tell you I've changed my driving habits pretty tremendously. Um, I used to pop up in our software with so many videos, you know, six, nine months ago. <laughs> and now it becomes, it, it's, it's really interesting because it, it comes, it becomes a game in the vehicle. Um, you don't want the camera to tell you what you just did wrong. Um, and to that point, what's really interesting and, and relatively unique about our solution is when there is a safety event, the camera gives you instantaneous feedback in the cab. So we start training the driver without uh, the administration of the company having to do anything. It's going to tell you, you just hard braked, or it's going to tell you you're following too closely to the vehicle in front of you. Um, it's going to tell you you're distracted. You know, you're driving down the road and we all do it. We kind of look out, oh, there's a cow and you're standing out the side window and, and things can happen so fast, specifically on the highways. So with all that in-cab coaching occurring um, and with those videos being sent to the administrators um, in their dashboard or for you know severe alerts and severe events, we can send an automatic email or text message to them immediately when that occurs with the accompanying video. And then that gives them the opportunity for that driver coaching. What you mentioned is getting rid of those bad habits. So if in the case you mentioned, you know, potentially with a solution like this, that business owner could have seen the writing on the wall, could have seen these things slowly build up, up, up and determine that this is not a person they want working for them anymore. Um, and when we start at the prevention level, we start talking about it, it's a hedge against that $200,000 accident or that $3 million fatality accident where we're working toward those things not occurring. It's, it's this idea of risk mitigation and insurance companies love that, right? That's what they're all about. When it comes to underwriting, um, they want a risk factor for your business and what your premiums are going to look like. So we've even seen up to 10% insurance pre premiums reduced by using our bid fleet solution because you are wrapping your company or in this more holistic safety protocol process and environment with what we can offer. Um, and then that coincides directly with our behavior scoring to where we can dashboard that out. We can see which drivers need improvement and which metrics they need to improve on whether it's aggression events, whether it's higher rates of speed, whether it's um, driving over the posted speed by an excessive amount, which that oh, leads to tickets, leads to potential accidents, things like that. Um, yeah, so there's so risky, many risky behaviors. 
that you're looking right, at. Right, risky behaviors, right? And so with you know all that data that you're getting, what we want to help you do is make sense of that. I mentioned best practices. So um, on the initial sale process, we want to understand that client and show them, we think these tools will work, right? If we're lucky enough to earn their business, then you know, from a post-sale perspective, we need to onboard them properly, kind of reiterate those things we discussed to begin with and kind of help them set up and onboard their system to where they can see immediate benefit from the get-go. Um, and we are more and more seeing companies, especially in the pool industry and also field service industries, take that next step into video telematics because it just offers so much more. Um, it offers a better evaluation tool of what really happened. What are my drivers doing in the cab? Um, and obviously decreasing liability. Established in 1947 and part of the Ream family of brands since 1985, Raypack is a globally recognized and trusted name in the heating industry. We manufacture high efficiency boilers, water heaters, and pool and spa heaters for commercial and residential applications at our Oxnard, California headquarters. With over 450 dedicated and passionate team members and 150,000 square feet of manufacturing space, we're always working to provide innovative solutions that meet our customers' high standards for quality while maximizing performance and reliability. Our state-of-the-art innovation learning center serves as a training hub and collaborative space for engineers, representatives, wholesalers, and contractors. The ILC is equipped with the latest digital technology, a large lecture room, and a live demonstration and instruction lab for hands-on learning so you get the most out of your training experience. We understand the importance of comfort while you learn. That's why our ILC features an inviting customer lounge and break area with interactive product displays where you can learn about our full product lineup. The ILC is the perfect setting to learn everything you need to know about Raypack products. As a member of the Ream family of brands, Raypack is committed to Ream manufacturing sustainability goals and taking a greater degree of responsibility for future generations. By 2025, Ream will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50% and achieve zero waste landfill for global manufacturing operations. At Raypack, we demonstrate our commitment to sustainability throughout our company and our value chain, from innovative, sustainable product development to our proactive and responsible manufacturing processes. Every member of our team practices sustainability every day because we've seen how small differences can make a big impact. Our products are designed and manufactured in the USA at our Oxnard headquarters. Our manufacturing facility features cutting edge automation technology and robotics to ensure precise, controlled production of our boilers, water heaters, and pool and spa heaters. At the end of the assembly line, we test every unit and document quality checkpoints to ensure safe and reliable performance before shipping products to our customers. Our innovative solutions designed by our team of engineers are built, tested, and perfected in our engineering lab prior to manufacturing. In 2018, we completed a multi-million dollar renovation to double our lab size and increase our testing capability. Equipped with 17 test stations, an environmental ambient control room, a wind test machine, a burst test chamber, a 3D printer, and more, our engineering lab demonstrates our commitment to both innovation and quality assurance. Raypack's engineering team has filed over 35 patents since 2019 and continues to develop cutting edge advancements in boiler and water heater technology every day. Our talented associates have a wealth of engineering, design, manufacturing, and service expertise to support your needs. We are dedicated to delivering exceptional solutions from custom to stock products and we are conveniently located in multiple locations across the country to provide solutions and support when and where you need it. There is no better time to partner with Raypack. Well, yeah, because the owner of the company that, you know, cares so much about it, they're off site. They're not there with that right. employee. So it gives them an idea of what's going on. It's like when 
you're you don't have a boss at the end of the hall right while you're working all day who can walk down the hall and see are you working are you productive <laughs> are you doing what you need to be doing or are you messing around on your computer right. looking up on the internet or buying stuff on amazon so with the pool industry it's a little bit different and i you know in this industry a lot of our pool service businesses are you know started by uh a person or husband wife or whatever it's very personal for them they That's might awesome. be eventually a big company that this would definitely benefit them but they it's still start it's not like a big corporate owned type entity most of them are own what we call mom and pop sure. and they can be mom and pop even though they've got 50 technicians sure. because you got the same owner and sometimes some of these companies are handed down through the generations and they teach the next generation the same professional trade that they were in and they hand their business off to their their child yeah, so there, there's a lot of care in there and and i i'm sure like you said there's a lot of they're up at night worried about a, a lot of these things but sometimes they're unaware of products like you guys that are there to uh help them out and give them a little bit more ease of thinking at night right what's going on you don't know what you don't know and until you have tools and things in place that can show you that um, you don't really can't develop a plan right I used to talk about this a lot when when I was working with new partners and it's our system essentially puts you in the passenger seat with your employees, your technicians on a daily basis. How would they perform or act differently if you were sitting there beside them all day long? We're actually, we're giving you a digital and virtual way to do that, um, uh, to improve their performance, um, to create that environment of prevention and, and in, to increase the productivity of your business because they're more cognizant, they're more aware uh, of what they're doing. and. You know, for drivers, um, you know, these owners are purchasing these vehicles, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar trucks, tack on another two, three thousand dollars in equipment and product on that. And we're talking about a 50 plus K asset driving around on a daily basis, right? So what yep. what can we do to maximize the efficiency of that investment you've made in your company? Um, and how we take a driver example, he doesn't own the vehicle, he doesn't have that kind of level of care that the the, the owner or or are those managers going to have? And so how do we make them more aware of what they're doing? Well, we're giving leadership tools to help coach the drivers in the proper manner. And so that's, that's the part that's I way. really like that you mentioned that I wasn't even aware of is that it does like coaching in the cab, in the cab. to the driver. It's not like there's some report that they that goes to their boss or the owner and then the boss sits them down in their office you know a week later hey i got this report and here's what it says about mm -hmm. it's like real time like right then and there which matters a lot more on changing habits it does. than it is getting it even a day later or at the end of the work day absolutely you, the only way you're going to change habits that affect the productivity affect the uh financial um you know solvency of a company is taking care of it right now. And it's it doesn't have to be that it's reported to the boss. It's making the employee aware of certain things that we know can cause accidents or mm -hmm. bring down productivity or anything else. So I, I I didn't realize that. That's pretty awesome that it does that coaching part there too. Yeah, and it's instantaneous. It's uh, it's what we call edge processing. So our, our camera is just viewing data constantly, 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 second, second, second. And the media, immediately when those events occur, we have that feedback, right? So it's not, there's other solutions in the industry. It goes up into a kind of a cloud processing system and, and events can be missed or the feedback is not as instantaneous as the what we can offer. And so I think that's, that's huge because again, it goes back to um, this game in the vehicle, right? As soon as drivers get a camera in the vehicle, those, those the behavior starts changing pretty immediately, right? But then it's just ongoing, um, training they're receiving in that cab. And then it, for me, if you take it the right way, instead of the the big brother and feel offended, right? It, it's kind of fun because it does become a game in the cab. Just, I don't want the camera to talk to me today. So I'm going to drive very safely. I'm, there's going to be no risky behavior from me because <laughs> I don't want that camera to tell me something today. So it, if you take the right mindset um, and, and as a business owner for your listeners, um, there's definitely a way to approach this with your drivers, right? Um, number one, you're trying to protect your business. If you've had an explosion in claims, 
Um, if you go out of business, that affects everybody in your company. They don't have a job anymore, right? So we're mm-hmm. trying to protect the organization as a whole so you can stay in business. And and if we're doing all those things, the different tools we talked about, not only this, this you know, really important idea of safety, but these ideas of creating return on investment through reducing overhead costs and the different tools and feature sets that we can use to create that, we're bringing more revenue back to the business. What does that mean to them? Potential bonuses for good behavior, growth of the company, um, things like that, that you know, drivers can participate in those benefits. So I wanna circle back to that, that safety conference I went to um, here um, last fall for one of the bigger four organizations I work with. And um, A, their insurance people were there and they loved what we could do for the company, right? Um, but B, the biggest thrill the drivers got was when we showed the charting tool of who the top three drivers were for the year from a safety perspective. And they all got really neat prizes and, and a bonus for their safe driving. And so That's drivers a really get into this. Yeah. That's and drivers really get into this. So you've got incentive programs that be, can be created, right? To uh, kind of alleviate that concern of, you know, the big brother aspect of the, of the solution. Um, and it's all about the way we, we deliver this to a business owners. Um, and B, their employees, that this is, this is not about, it's not supposed to be punitive. Um, it's supposed to help you be more aware of what you're doing. And then, hey, guess what? If you're doing the right things, we're going to create a driver incentive program around this for you guys. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. So I know we kind of touched on some products. Is there So give us kind of the line item things um, that you guys have to offer that would definitely be you know, of interest to a pool service company, just so we kind of highlight that all in one section here. Uh, so specifically from, uh, you know, we're a, we're a software company or, or, or it's inherently important to have the device in the system too. So majority of all our pool services are going with a very easy plug and play solution. Um, our dash cameras are also very self, uh, you can install them very easily, self-install. They are plug and play installation as well. Um, so that pops right into the vehicle. You've got your system in place. What we've also seen with pool companies, depending on what type of, of work they do, i.e. things like pool construction, is um, we can go all the way into their assets too. So if they've got mini excavators or uh, bobcats, things like that for pool construction, we can track those for inventory management, loss prevention. Um, trailers as well. They want to slap a little battery power tracker on their trailers to, to keep track of those and where those are, especially if they're leaving them and dropping them and, and they're staying at a job site overnight and things like that. We want to create some loss prevention there as well. So uh, just a broad range of, of products where we can kind of cover all aspects of their fleet, whether it's asset, whether it's fleet, and then really taking that next step into the, the video world with our dash game solution. With, with the safety. And- yeah, absolutely. And that all ties back into the software. Um, all that data is flowing into the software with the different tools we have from the live mapping. Um, so you know where everybody is right now. Um, to a full reporting suite to see on demand and historically what the business has done. Um, what we typically see on the reporting side for the pool industry, their big concerns are um, the stop verification. Where did they stop? How long were they there? Was that long enough to do the proper job? Um, did they take enough time to clean the pool well, um, to service the, the pumps well, things like that? So they're looking at that verification. And that that's very useful with billing too. So we think about the downstream benefit of that type of verification, we know we've billed the client correctly for you know time or service. Um, when we talk about the efficiency aspect of the system, so when we think about reports, we want to monitor our trip reports. You know, how long are our trips between those stops? Are we creating effective routes? Are we are we aggregating and truncating jobs per technician in smaller areas to where we can get more done in a day? Um, fast math on that. So most service companies, there's some sort of a fee. And forgive me for my ignorance, I'm not sure if it's the same way in the pool industry, some sort of a fee, a dispatch fee, something to show up to identify what's wrong potentially, right? So let's say that's a $50 fee just to show up and, and do a diagnosis, a consultation. So if on average, what we see is roughly one job done per vehicle per week extra. So that's 50 bucks. Let's take that number. That's one job per week. That's $200 per month, right? What if you got 10 trucks that are doing that? That's $2,400 in extra revenue back to the business, All right? So we start thinking of efficiencies also create revenue increases. So our reporting tools can help with that. So 
we move down into that safety aspect of the system with our video module, with our behavior and risk mitigation uh, dashboard. Um, we think about, I mentioned the maintenance aspect. Most mom and pops, maintenance is what? It's on a, it's on a whiteboard, it's on an Excel spreadsheet, it's up to the driver to get their vehicle maintained on time. Um, and what is the impact to a mom and pop pool company when they have a major mechanical repair? That's expensive. So what we can do with our maintenance module is make sure we can set up those PMs. You know when the services do. It alerts you when services do. That service gets performed. You log it in the system. Now you have all your rec records digital and online for that type of service. Well, um, and I, I think that's awesome because one of the key things I always say, and it's even in the pool industry with repairs on pools, is uh, prevent, be preventative or instead of reactive, be proactive so, instead of reactive. And that sounds like what your software is doing is being proactive, which is preventative on the the management of the fleet for maintenance versus waiting until you have a breakdown because Absolutely. you haven't done your oil change or whatever you need to do on a, on a certain basis. Yeah, and, and the idea I like to have for our partners is thing in terms of if this is your first foray into GPS tracking, I mentioned you don't know what you don't know yet. So we like to take this approach of um, our system first and foremost helps you identify opportunities for improvement um, or risky behaviors where we can create that environment of prevention. Um, then we're going to kind of act on that information. We're going to go through our reporting and review what that data is telling us. And then the third part of that, where a company get, can get to the manage by exception, um, being able to monitor this effectively with real-time notifications. Because in a lot of cases, even in large organizations um, and in corporate level type pool companies, um, nobody has time to sit and stare at a computer screen all day. We need to be automating and delivering information that is important to you so that you can manage your business effectively uh, alongside our application and our tools we're offering. So, you know, that's a big piece of, of, of what we do for the client is, is, is keep those automatic alerts flowing to them so they know and they're aware. That's that proactive approach so they can handle those issues in real time um, to, to prevent bad things from happening. That's awesome. So how can pool companies assess their cost savings in a year, in year one, by adding fleet management tools and dash cameras? Absolutely. We've gone through some stats already. I mentioned the idle stat. Um, we can typically see up to 30% reduction in fuel costs. So think in terms of you know, if we're doing an evaluation of, of we're going to start a program in 2023, let's take a look at that 2022 fuel spend. And think in terms of, on average, this is what I can say with the tracking system. This could be my potential one-year return on just a single metric of fuel. And, and take 30% off that bill and see what that looks like for you. We talked about um, getting into the dash cam solutions and potentially up to 10% in insurance savings. Take a look at your premiums, not 10% off that. What type of money is that returned back to you? Um, we talked about the idea of improving efficiencies to get more jobs done per day, right? What is, what's the average job? cost you know what type of revenue is that back to the business and then do an average of one job a month start there start conservative uh, one job per week is typically what we see and then one thing we haven't even discussed is payroll right so in most cases uh technician the pool technicians work hours correlate with their vehicle usage um they're either starting from home or they're getting to the office they're clocking in they're jumping their truck they got their jobs and they're going for the day right so we have that verification of um, and kind of redundancy with how many hours did they actually work, right? And if we got guys, <laughs> true story, I've had multiple clients tell me, guys don't want to come back till five. So if they finish early, they'll go hang out somewhere and then show back up at the office at five. And that's it's a payroll issue. That's some, some payroll fraud there. And so we can, we can monitor and find out those type of losses as well. So wrap all that together. We talk about fuel savings. We talk about potential insurance savings. We talk about a reduction in claims. Um, we talked about creating efficiencies with, within payroll and within and getting more jobs done per day. It, that's easy to see a fast return. I mean, typically we're seeing anywhere from three to four, ret four to one return on their investment with our solution. Um, I could sit down with a client based on the challenges they're facing and probably come up with a hundred to two hundred dollars per truck in savings pretty easily. Now. If they're using the tools effectively, they're going to realize that. So that again goes back to the onboarding process that we want to offer. 
we got to remember what we talked about to begin with, those challenges they're facing to where we can help them implement the tools within our system that are going to be most, most beneficial. And then what we love to see with our partners is they grow into the system. They start using more and more and more and more. And then it's just an everyday piece of their business that, you know, in all likelihood, they're not going to be able to live without once they have it, right? It's like you get a shiny new toy and then your little brother takes it away and you get really upset. And that's what, you know, that's what we want our solution to be is this, this shiny new toy that is your favorite thing that really helps your business. And nobody take it away from me. Nobody take <laughs> it away. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So where can my uh, podcast listeners, my pool, my pool service and pool industry professionals um, find out more information about your company? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to www.gpstrackit.com. Um, you can call in too. Um, our toll-free number is 1-866-320-5810. Um, and anybody's going to be happy to help you learn more about our solution. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It was very interesting. And I could, it does so many different things that Absolutely. can be very beneficial to our industry. So thank no. you so much for sharing your knowledge today. Absolutely. Thank you, Lauren, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you to your audience. Uh, hopefully they, they enjoy it. Thank you so much. You have a great day. You too. Thanks for diving in today with the Let's Talk About Pools podcast. Be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. And feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts so more aquatic professionals like you can learn about the show. We appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Let's Talk About Pools podcast.